Alright guys, welcome back to another weekly manga review video. Um, I still have plans to do the Berserk video, but I like to take my time with chapters, so I haven't really got around to reading all of the latest Berserk. I think I have about 10 chapters or so left, and then I'm fully caught up and I will have that video up sometime this week. Um, but this week we got all three chapters. And I think they actually came out earlier, but I didn't even know about it. I just checked it Wednesday, expecting the chapters, and they have been up for a while. So I'm probably late with this video, but I did enjoy this week's chapters. Um, to start with, Naruto 597, The Secret Behind the Space-Time Ninjutsu. Holy crap, this chapter. Um, oh, man, let me see if I can explain all of this for uh, just to recap it. Uh, so... Kakashi is explaining how Toby can disappear and suck things in and how his jutsu works. And what happens is when Naruto goes through him, he only takes out a part of his body and moves it to another dimension. <laughs> so Kakashi, with his Sharingan, can send things to another dimension. So he sent the, uh, the little dagger... Um, and the Rasengan to this other dimension. And since Toby's body was also there, it, he did feel the effects. He got the damage from it. Um, so yeah, it is, it is kind of strange, and they spent a lot of the chapter explaining this, but um, the big thing I got from this chapter was, who is Toby? Because Kakashi explained that only not every single eye jutsu is connected to the same dimension meaning that he's got one eye and Toby has the other eye from the same person so obviously everybody's gonna say it's Obito but I think that's a little too obvious I think that if it turns out that Toby is Obito because of the whole name thing and all of that stuff it's just way too predictable people have been saying that for years now and I really don't think it's going to end up being him. Um, we know that Toby has been collecting all these eyeballs for some time now. So it's also kind of hard to believe that in this particular fight, he's using Obito's Sharingan. It's just it's hard to match all this stuff up and say, hey, it's not just it's just a coincidence. But um, anyway, I thought that was the main thing for this chapter. But they don't reveal who he is, and Toby tells them that it's hopeless. Kurama gives his power to Naruto, and Naruto goes to attack Toby. And that was it, really. The entire chapter was spent explaining um, Toby's powers, how he goes to these different dimensions, or sends his body to different dimensions, and stuff like that. But I don't know. I thought it was okay. It was interesting. And it had to be explained at some point, so... Um, Bleach chapter 503, Wrath as a Lightning. This was an awesome chapter. <laughs> um, Zoraki throws down these three stern ridders, the ones he had on his back. At first I thought it was only two, but apparently he was carrying three of these guys, and he's killed them. And what I really liked about this is when it showed the character designs. The one guy had like a little eyeball in his forehead, um, the other one was like uh, the monkey or gorilla and when it showed the designs I was like damn it kinda sucks because they have cool designs I'd like to see what their powers are well it actually does show what their powers are and how Zaraki was able to kill him the gorilla could roar and send enemies flying and one of them I guess could control people like puppets and then the other could turn into Zaraki himself and I thought this chapter just made Zaraki sound like a total badass I mean just the stuff he was saying was just incredible and then the little guy, the Quincy, who's always next to the leader, um, says something to Zaraki, and he's like, I don't have time for you, and he goes straight for the leader, and then you just see this like huge explosion of power, and I really, really like that. And then it cuts to Ichigo, who's still stuck in his cage, and he's beating the thing, and I really thought he was going to break out. I'm glad he didn't, um, because then it's like, well, all he had to do was just hit it really hard. So I'm glad that there is some technique to the cage. And the whole thing is very snake way, if you know what I mean, like referencing Dragon Ball here. Um, it's very much just a way to keep Ichigo out of the fight and keep him contained 
so that the other characters get a chance to shine. And I'm fine with that. I don't need to see Ichigo interrupt this fight right now. So we see uh, Hisagi is getting destroyed by Stern Ritter O, whose power is he is overkill. And I also like how they all have letters that mean something and reference their powers. And O tells him that he gets stronger the more people he kills. And he says that he was here last time and he's killed 100 people today. And last time he was here in Soul Society, he killed 100 people. And he also killed another vice captain. Uh, who, and he's talking about Chojiro, the vice captain for the first division, uh, Yamamoto. And he goes to kill Hazagi the same way he killed Chojiro. And Yamamoto shows up and saves him. And O says that he's going to defeat him with Chojiro's Bankai. So a lot of great stuff happened in this chapter. Yamamoto has now entered the fight. And we all know he's a super badass. Um, with or without his Bankai. But what I really liked about this is when you have cool characters and designs. And they kind of just get killed without seeing what they can really do. Like I thought Chojiro had a really cool design. And I'm glad we are going to see his Bankai even in death we still get a chance to see it with these Quincy's powers. So I thought that was really cool. Um, so definitely a great Bleach chapter this week. And I'm really surprised that Kubo was already back. I thought we would have to wait until next week before Bleach returned, but he's already back, so that's great. On to One Piece 677, Counter Hazard. Uh, cover story is Karabo getting knocked out by Jimby. Um, and we see Eustace Kid and Killer have invited Hawkins and Scratchman to form an alliance. Um, it shows Eustace Kid. He's got scars all over him now. He's got his left hand is metal. Um, Killer's got some weird metal things on his hands. And they have like this secret base where they've been watching the experiments on Punk Hazard. And they enter the room, and Scratchman's there, and. They kind of start to fight, but Killer stops it and he says, Look, we're here to form an alliance, not fight each other. So that's another alliance forming, kind of like Law and Luffy. But I thought that was really cool. Um, back in the cage, Law has Frankie set the ship on fire so that the smoke blocks out the cameras. And he escapes from the handcuffs because they're not sea stone. What he did was, all this time he's been on Punk Hazard, he swapped out the Sea Stone handcuffs for regular handcuffs so that he could just escape whenever he wanted to. So that's kind of what he did here, and he's cutting all the others free. And he actually switches to Shigi and Smoker back to their regular bodies. Um, he tells them that if they take down Virgo, that's going to help him. However, they have to forget about Joker. I'm not sure why. Um, Personally, I think Law wants revenge on Don Quixote himself, and that's why he doesn't want them to go after him, but I uh, have no idea, really. Um, Luffy breaks out of the cage. Law turns around and sees Luffy's already gone. I thought that was kind of funny. And then we see Zoro's group is chasing after the dragon. And Sanji is running the slowest. It was really funny because they did the whole thing with the legs, how they have those like really fast legs, and they were talking about how you, this is the only way to outrun it, outrun the gas. And Sanji's really slow. He's like, Nami's lung capacity, it can't go any further. I, I'm at my limit, and my chest hurts. And he goes and reaches his chest, and he grabs Nami's boob. And this gives him a huge speed boost. So he just takes off running. And Zoro's talking about, like, what kind of power-up is that? But I thought that was a really great scene. And then we see Usopp and Nami and Sanji's body are riding Brown Beard, And they all meet up together. And Zoro and Kinemon um, cut down the shutters so that they can escape and um, get inside the base. And once they're inside, um, they meet up. And Law and Luffy's group is on the top. And Luffy looks down and says, it looks like Zoro's here, everyone's here now, and it's time to get crazy. So, next week's chapter is probably going to be pretty nuts. Um, everybody's back together. I'm sure that Law is going to switch Nami and Sanji back, so Sanji can have his full power-ups now. And it's just going to be a really great chapter. So, I really did enjoy this week's manga chapters. Um... As far as Naruto goes, I think Toby is still going to be a very, very tough opponent. He has to be. Um, I'm sure it's going to come down to Naruto and Sasuke to end the series, but right now Toby is the main villain. 
and they're not just going to figure out his powers and beat him like that. It's not going to be that easy. I, I think he can always take out the eye and put another one in, so that would mean Kakashi has no way to beat him. But Bleach uh, has just been doing an awesome job. Really looking forward to where they go with that. And One Piece, of course, like Luffy said, it's going to get crazy. So that's my review of this week's manga chapters. I'll be back later in the week with another manga video for Berserk. And then next Wednesday, again, with the new weekly chapters. So I hope you guys like this video. Leave your thoughts on this week's chapters in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Bye.